That's why I got a limo out here, a mile long, filled with women waiting for me to go. Woo! Welcome to the podcast for 2018. It is January 5th. Now, what's going on in the world? What do you kiddies want to know? Well, the U.S. economy is taking off. We are experiencing high 3% growth in the end of the last quarter of 2017. We're looking at 4 to 5% growth going into 2018. Why does that matter? Growth means jobs. Uh, President Trump has managed to double the growth rate of the United States economy. We still have a lot to go, though, but he, Obama averaged 1.9. Trump is in the high threes. We're looking at 4 to 5 percent growth rate in uh, 2018. That means he's more than doubled or two and a half times what Obama's done. Um, that's what I'm looking forward to at the, by the end of 2018. You're going to see millions and millions of new jobs, a lot of good factory jobs. Even before the tax cut was passed, we managed to get Foxcom, a company that made the iPhone I have here. Um, they make the iPhones for Apple. They built a large factory or committed to a large factory in Wisconsin. Why? Because they trusted Trump and they believe in the Trump tax cut. And they want to start making things in the United States. Why is that? Trump has informed Chinese and the rest of the world, we're not going to be suckers anymore. You need to start making things in the United States. Foxconn believed Trump. They knew Trump before he was elected. They believe Trump now and therefore... They're building stuff here in the United States. A lot of jobs, a lot of factories are coming back here because of Donald Trump. And we need to remember that come the midterm elections, 2018 election. If the Republicans lose the House and Senate, you're going to see a loss of a lot of jobs, and you're going to see the loss of millions of potential jobs. On the other hand, if the Republicans pick up seats in the Senate, can get over the 60-seat threshold, which is a high, high possibility. With Trump's work ethic and the way the American economy is going to be taking off, the Republicans can not only hold the Senate, but I think they can pick up eight, well, nine seats now. So nine seats give you a 60-seat majority, but we need more than that. We need 15 seats. We need a 15-seat pickup. That way, We've not only got the 60, but we're not at 61 or 62. We don't go through this. We, we need to get every Republican everything they want. Then we would be able to say, hey, we've got a cushion of multiple Republicans in the Senate. We can get anything through we want, at which point you can see the tax, tax rate go from 21 down to 15. You can see the personal uh, tax cuts be made permanent and be made more generous. You can see the economy Uh, just really, really take off, and it would just be an amazing thing for the American economy. If you want the best for America, that means the best for American workers, the best for the American working class, and the best for yourself as an American, you need to get out and help the Republicans hold the House and pick up at least 10 seats in the Senate because that's what it needs. we need to really control and run the United States Senate and really turn this country around. We're trying to make this country great again. But let's talk about how this country, how the United States hasn't been great in quite a while. Now, the majority of the last 10 years, and I'll even go back through the majority of the Bush years too, China was growing at 6.5%, 7%, 8.5%, while the United States was growing at one5 1.9%. We, we had a very low growth rate while the Chinese, our major competitor, had extremely high growth rate. It's like being uh, being in a division with the New England Patriots. They continue to win Super Bowls, and the United States under Obama was the New York Jets. Oh, we're doing all right. We're, we almost, we're, we're almost at, you know, 500. No, the New England Patriots are a major competition, and they keep winning Super Bowls, and we don't. That's the, that, that's the benchmark. What's your competition doing? Our competition is China. China has been kicking our butts. They've been making tens of millions of jobs. I said that correctly. They make more than 10 million jobs a year while we don't even make a million. Hmm. Does that normally compute? Is that what you hear in the nightly news? China makes millions of jobs. The United States is happy with 100,000. That's the average quarter. 
So China makes more than a million jobs in three months. We make 100,000. We're happy that we made 100, 150,000 jobs. China makes a million. If you reported it that way, as a competition between, say, President Obama and China, Obama lost every quarter. If you look at it as, oh, it's okay, we're not going to compare ourselves to other countries, we're not going to compare our growth rate to China, we're not going to compare our growth rate to Mexico, we're not going to compare our growth rate to Canada, we're not going to compare our growth rate to South, South Korea. By the way, South Korea, we pay to defend. We're not going to compare our growth rate to Japan, a company or a country that we paid to defend. If you look at those, we lose the majority of those quarters. That's why we have a, 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 def, a deficit in what the United States imports versus what we export. These other countries are growing faster than we are. Therefore, we, we end up in debt to them. We end up uh, buying more from them than we sell to them because they manufacture more than we, we do. This has been going on for decades. Trump has been talking about this since the 80s. It's one of the reasons he became president. He's promised to address this. Had Hillary addressed this, she might have been president, but she did So the main thing to look for in the Trump economy that nobody would even bring up in the Obama economy is how does the United States rate against the Chinese economic growth? How many jobs do the Chinese create versus how many jobs did the American economy create? That's something Obama never brought up because he never even came close to winning a, a single quarter. Trump, um, that's his goal. How does the United States stack up against economic growth with South Korea? South Korea, an ally of ours, somebody we pay tens of billions of dollars a year to defend, but has more economic growth than we do. Does, does that come up? That's something the United States could beat South Korea, but you never hear that mentioned on the news because, well, the Democrats don't normally win that argument. Therefore, why even discuss that? It's like the Cleveland Browns talking about their record. You know the Cleveland Browns are going to lose, so nobody in Cleveland wants to talk about that. The Democrats know they're going to lose the economic race between the United States and China, so don't bring it up. Uh, economic growth between Mexico and the United States, under Democrats, we normally lose that, so let's not talk about it, so it's not even an issue. Under Trump, we're going to talk about it. Are we growing faster than Mexico? I think we will. Are we going to grow as fast as China? That is a hard nut to crack, and here's why. China grew at 6.7% in 2016. We grew at 1.9. They were three times ahead of us. That's like playing the New England Patriots, and they outscore you 3-1. to one. It's hard to close that gap. Hopefully by the end of the first Trump administration, his first four years, American growth will will get up to where the Chinese are, and by forcing the Chinese to manufacture stuff in the United States, we can slow their rate of growth so we can catch them. But it's an offensive and defensive thing. If you allow all your jobs to go to China, you're never going to catch the Chinese economic growth machine. So you need jobs in the United States, and you need to take jobs away from China. Trump is doing both. So when you see the United States begin to compete on the global stage, talking about Hey, we outgrew China. We created more jobs in China. We, cre we created more jobs in Mexico. That's when you know the Trump economy really kicks in. And that's when the Democrats are going to go bat crazy because they got no argument for that. They had eight years. They never came close. In all honesty, Bush, I don't think, ever came close except for a few years at the height of the housing boom, uh, which also matched a Chinese recession. But those were not sustained numbers. If they were sustained numbers... Um, Republicans would have uh, carried the White House, but we didn't because the, the Bush economy wasn't as good as it could have been. I'm Tim with Tim's TV. That's a future of 2018. We're heading towards 6% economic growth because we're going to take China. Thank you, Mr. Trump. If you like what you hear and see, please subscribe below. Whether you whether you like it or don't like it, tell your friends about it because this is the best thing you're going to get on the internet. This is Tim with TimsTV.com. <laughs>